It smelled like fish, and I'm a vegetarian, I'm super squeamish, and everything was wriggling, and there was blood, and Toby was skinning an eel, and I just chunned, I just chun, 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 chun. I guess probably my worst. Not worst, it was probably my most memorable experience. It was uh, eel day, um, where they were skinning and killing eels, killing eels off set, no eels were harmed in the making of seven. Um, and uh, I chunned in a bucket, I threw up in a bucket on set in the middle of the day. And then that happened. It's because it was so hot in there and it smelled like fish and I'm a vegetarian, I'm super squeamish and everything was wriggling and there was blood and Toby was skinning an eel and I just chunned, I just chunned, chun, 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 chun. Well, I mean, everybody's so great, but watching Lauren do her do her, her scenes is sometimes, you know, the crew and all, we're, we're like, I'm amazed because she, she is just this volcano of, of energy and as she buzzes through the house and Oh, oh I, when I shot her doing one of the newscasts, she plays a newscaster, and she does that kind of, that cadence that newscasters do, and then she just stares into the camera. And, and you just, everybody cracks up every time. You know, it's, it's a, the scene you're referring to in the pilot is uh, a scene I've never seen before, and that's what I loved about it, because it's both kind of a super uncomfortable, um, sexual, really innocent. Um, it's, it's this beautiful thing between women that you never ever see about motherhood and the pain of that. Um, and when we did it, uh, it, there was just a couple people in the room with us when we did it. But I, I, I found it incredibly moving. It was actually one of the, 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 the scenes, and I hope that's emblematic of the show, that, that we will go to this weird Wow, I mean, there's no way to say anything other than, wow, that was really weird once you finish that scene. Because, but it's really emotional. It's really, it's really this flurry of all different feelings. I mean, we shot it as many times as we needed to until we got what we felt was right. And you know what? It wasn't awkward at all. Because Lauren is such a professional and she's so amazing. And she's also a, like a great person. So she's so fun to be around. So. And I think that we were both just in it together. We're like, listen, we're both girls. We both have boobs. And like, at first I was quite tentative and I was like, I don't want to hurt you. Cause that's really us. We're really doing that. Like, it's not like stunt hands or whatever. Like it's just me and Lauren. And um, I was, yeah, I was worried about hurting her or whatever. She was like, just let's just do it. You know, we got this and it was fine. It was actually a really beautiful moment when we shot it for sure. It's weird cause you do kind of there's a part of you that wants to look after it and like you, you hold it really carefully but when you stare into those eyes it's like the eyes you will see yourself hell, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's very weird i we we had an issue because we didn't know how much it should look like a doll and and then in the end we actually found the actual real the doll that they use for this therapy where it's, it's incredibly lifelike and I was like, that's what we're using. In fact, they, you know, we had, they, they presented a lot of dolls to me and, and considered something that looked less like a, a child because it's, a lot of times you can't tell the difference. If she's carrying something and it's weighted and it looks the exact same, it's very uncanny. And, and so I'm playing on that, that uncanny valley feeling that, huh, that's really weird. Cause it evokes in you all those things that a child does. If a child came here, we would all have a certain visceral reaction. And that doll does that. The skin's very much silicone, but the weight of it, it feels like you're carrying a real child, especially when it's in, in its outfit or in its like carriage, it just does, does feel like it look like a real baby. Like you could walk down the street with it and people wouldn't question it. I did this practical joke on my mother-in-law who came to visit my offices and she came to visit and the, the doll was in one of my executive's offices, but in a box. And, and she's like, oh wow, look at this office, so nice. And then I was like, oh, someone, someone left a baby. And I went and I picked it up, and my mother-in-law, who's an older lady, she's like, oh no, who left a baby? And I was like, I don't know, this is, I can't believe this. And she's like, who would leave a baby? And then I was like, here, hold the baby. Then I gave it to her, and then she started going, oh my God, and she was tearing up, and I was like, I'm just kidding, that's not, that's the doll, that's a doll I'm making a show, and, and she still wouldn't stop shaking, right? She's still holding it because your body is telling you it's real, and she was like, and, and even though she, I just told her it was a doll, she still looks at it, and looks at and and st won't stop and your body is saying wait wait and, and it was like misfiring in her mind because everything is saying this is real but I'm saying no it's a doll. 
Rupert has some weird things going on with him, and and this is one of them. I, he's not he he talks about this doll. I don't understand it really, but now that I think about it, didn't he, he sent me something like a bottle of wine with some like weird baby? I have to ask him about it. He has this weird sense of humor, Rupert. So I don't know what goes on in his house and all that stuff, but um, it works on screen, so I, I love it. You should keep doing it. I don't actually know where it is, to be fair. Um, <laughs> I should I should try and pick that out. Um, but yeah, no, I do I do I am familiar with these dolls. And I think the genre he's he's the master of this, and uh, yeah, no, so, I mean all his films they really do stay with you. I think Six Six Sense stands out for me. I love that show. I wanted to merge with them, like the Unbreakable stuff because I really want superpowers. <laughs> yeah, you really want to fly. I really want to fly and I really want superpowers. But I think there are little hints in, I don't know, I haven't asked her about this yet, but you know, I'm in that blue raincoat in the in the rain and I was like, mm, is that maybe a nod to Unbreakable or am I just reading into this? But I'll ask him, but yeah, I think he does have little notes and other stuff. Mm. Yeah, it's tempting to kind of reference another. I've, uh, I've had that temptation. But because I didn't actually organically think of them all as living in a contemporary world together, I, I feel like one, it would be disingenuous, and two, some guy on the internet say, well, that's not possible because that happened and that road is over here, and you said in that movie that, that no one had ever done that, and in The Servant they said this, and, and I'd be like, you're right, it's all been a lie, I just did that because I thought it was cool, and so I don't want to ever get caught with a, a wrong kind of putting things together, but it has, I've, I have thought about it even in Glass, the hospital, I was thinking, could they reference the, the old couple from The Visit in there? And, and I was like, don't do it, don't do it. That's gonna, something else is gonna go wrong if you do that. The house is in... It's a, it's it's in a, a sound stage. In, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, none of that. Oh. <laughs> Other than Nell, who plays the servant, she, she was like, ah, Rupert's here! Um, and so I, I was like, oh my God, we have to, we have to be professional about this. But it was, it's funny, yeah, what you don't, because for me, he's just Rupert now, the adult, the adult actor. And, and when you watch the show, you completely forget his child acting. And he's this completely other person. First of all, he does an American accent. We haven't seen him as an adult like this. And he's this brash, you know, uh, cursing, drinking, you know, guy. And he's perfect for it. But then when you go out to a restaurant, there's all these, you know, 20 something girls who are like, oh my God, <laughs> it's Harry Potter. <laughs> They all did such a great job. They they approached it slightly differently, each of them. How they did. Uh, Rupert used a uh, a dialect coach and and just got it after the dialect coach. Yeah, it's it's funny. It's a very mechanically, it's a really weird thing. So I had like a, I've not really done this before. <laughs> Got a voice coach. The, 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 what your tongue does in your mouth, like our tongue when we're speaking English, is it's like it's doing like that. I don't know. It's it's very strange. It's, it, it's fascinating, but it's um. Yeah, a few words kind of trip me up, like floorboards. For him, I think it's easier to kind of be British off camera and then come on and then be this character. And, and again, I think it clicks him into the part. Whereas Nell and Toby, they spoke English throughout. So even at off, off the set. Yeah. So Toby, you couldn't even, he, he would always speak in an American accent so that they could get looser and so they can express things and not be restricted by just this small language. It's very tricky to change accents because it limits your palate, sometimes in, a, in, a, in an interesting way. But the, the dream is that you can just get wider and wider with your emotional colors you can choose from. <laughs>